There are a ton of things you can collect in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga and with the right preparation you can make finding all the collectibles a lot easier already. Plus there's an easy way to start the game with a larger roster of characters and ships already including the amazing Razor Crest which we of course know from the Mandalorian series. So we'll tell you how to get those in this video as well as some tips for if you want to unlock a specific character and some must have upgrades you don't want to miss. So if you want to start hunting for all the collectibles as soon as possible you will need a wide variety of characters to be able to solve all the puzzles. All characters are divided into classes as you can see in the character menu and each class has an ability that allows them to access areas other classes can't reach. Now you'll unlock characters and locations to explore by just playing through the different episodes but there is a way to jumpstart your collection of characters by simply entering some codes. You can do this by pausing the game and going to the enter code section and after entering the corresponding code you will immediately add a character to your roster. Now from what I found these codes can be used by anyone on any platform and they also don't seem to have an expiration date so they should work for you. We'll post all available ones in the description of this video so you can enter all of them and unlock some awesome characters. Like the Emperor, which immediately gives you access to a dark side force user, something that would take a lot longer if you're playing through the story or free roaming. And the same goes for Dengar, who is a bounty hunter, which is another class you'd normally unlock a lot later into the game. There are also some characters you want to add to your arsenal simply because they are awesome, like Mr. Bones for example. This red battle droid has bones attached to its body and fights with a knife built into his arm, which is pretty cool. And on the note of awesome things, two of the codes also give you access to new spaceships. And while the resistance transport might not be that exciting, the Razor Crest most certainly is. We of course know this as Mando's ship from the Mandalorian and by simply filling in the code you are able to use it to fly planet to planet or engage in some ship to ship combat if you want. And by the way, after entering all the codes you're pretty much missing out on two character classes, Scavenger and Astromech Droid. These can be easily unlocked by playing episode 7, The Force Awakens, as not too far into the episode you will unlock Rey and BB-8, who are a Scavenger and an Astromech Droid respectively. And now that you have a character of every class in your roster you should be able to get most collectibles you come across, either when free roaming or replaying levels. Keep in mind that you can replay levels you've previously completed with your entire available roster by selecting the level and then selecting free play when the game asks you in which mode you want to replay the level. Oh and if you liked the video so far remember to leave a like and you can of course subscribe as well if you don't want to miss out on future content. So while having a lot of characters available is certainly going to be helpful, the two most important things in the game are going to be your two main currencies, studs and kyber bricks. These are both needed for the many upgrades you can buy and studs are used for things like buying characters too, so you'll want to have a lot of both. And well, an easy way to get as many studs as possible is by breaking as much as you can. Destructible objects will drop studs when you either shoot or hit them and there are a lot of these in the different levels you'll visit. They're easiest to spot in these larger explorable sections of a planet as breakable objects are always made out of bricks while the background isn't. Still, you can always see if something is breakable by simply shooting or punching it. And you can even break and rebuild some pieces of cover for extra studs. The first time a piece breaks and the first time you rebuild it, you will get some studs, although the next time it won't drop anything, so unfortunately you can't use this to farm. You do of course lose some studs when you die, which to be honest doesn't happen all that frequently, but you can pick them back up after respawning if you're quick enough. However, if you die due to fall damage, getting those lost studs back is going to be pretty much impossible. Thanks to game ranks however, link to their channel will be in the video description, we know there's an option in the menu to turn that off. Simply go to options, gameplay and then activate fall recovery. This specific option will make it so that you will never lose studs from falling to your death but it is turned off by default and by turning it on we don't have to worry about falling anymore. And by the way, while recording I actually noticed that even though you see your character losing studs when falling with the option turned off, if you check your stud counter afterwards you can see that you didn't actually lose anything. Which I don't think is supposed to happen as the options menu literally mentions you losing studs if you fall. So I'm not sure if this is just a bug on my and I'd still argue it doesn't hurt to turn fall recovery on because at least that way you're sure you'll never lose anything due to an unfortunate jump. So collecting studs is nice to save up and buy some nice things later on but it's even more important when you're playing an actual mission. With the way the open world and the missions are designed it can sometimes be a bit confusing when that actually is but the easiest way to tell is to see if you have the stud counter on the top middle of your screen. And you really want to pay attention to it as the more you fill it up, which you of course do by collecting studs, the more kyber bricks you receive at the end of a mission. Completing a mission for the first time will give you one regardless of how many collectibles you found 
but for every third part of the stud bar you fill up, you'll get an extra Kyber brick. So if you collect a lot of these, you get four bricks instead of one at the end of a mission. You will also receive them from completing side objectives during a mission, completing a full mini kit, or simply by looking for them and solving puzzles in the explorable areas of the map. We'll have tips for all of that later in the video as well. And like I said, these Kyber Bricks are really important for your character upgrades and there is a super easy way of getting them, but it requires us to go into space. So just open the galaxy map and fast travel to any planet space, then look for this icon on your HUD. This will lead you to a Kyber Comet, a large glowing rock that you just need to shoot repeatedly in order to destroy it, after which you receive 5 Kyber Bricks. Which is a lot, considering the fact that it only takes a couple of seconds to do so, where completing a level with side objectives takes a lot longer. You can by the way easily check if a planet space has one of these comments by checking if you can earn kyber bricks in this area from the travel menu. If you have 0 out of 5 kyber bricks in a specific region, high chance there's still a comet waiting for you there. And it's smart to then spend these upgrade materials on your core upgrades as two of the most useful upgrades in the game are located in this tree. Most upgrades have three tiers, each tier costing progressively more studs and kyber bricks. You will want to invest one upgrade in each of the first three skills in your core upgrades as that unlocks your first health upgrade but more importantly, after getting that you have access to the second tier of the tree which houses the attract studs and collectible detector upgrades. Both of these are incredibly useful as they help you with your main activity in the game, which is of course collecting stuff. Attract studs is really simple, it draws in nearby studs so you don't have to walk over to them to grab them. The higher your upgrade level, the higher the range at which studs will be pulled towards you. But even better is the collectible detector upgrade, which will mark nearby collectibles with this blue circle if you're nearby. At first level it only marks ships and mini kits, which are these collectibles you find during a mission, but at rank 2 it will also mark kyber bricks out in the world, allowing you to get your next upgrades even quicker. The the final level will also help you locate the rare data cards which are used to buy cheat codes from your menu. So if you invest your kyber bricks in these two upgrades first, finding collectibles when you continue playing is going to be much much easier. And if you're not looking for collectibles but a specific character instead, you want to find them in the character menu and inspect them. This will allow you to spend studs on buying a rumor which will show you what the unlock conditions for a character are. You will of course still need to complete these conditions then, but you'll at least know which area you need to visit or which episode you need to play in order to unlock a character. Also keep in mind that sometimes you still need to buy a character after unlocking them. For instance, if you finish a mission and a character icon shows up in the end screen but it's grayed out, you will still need to buy the character before you can play as them. This rumor system works on more than just characters though, as you can also buy hints for the location of ships, mini kit parts and even level challenges. And for completionists, that last one is probably the best place to spend your studs. Each level has three challenges for you to complete, which reward an extra kyber brick if you do all of them. The objectives can be pretty varied, sometimes they are combat related, sometimes they require you to find an easter egg, but you never know what a challenge is until you actually complete it. That is, unless you spend your studs on a rumor first, after which you will be able to see the objective you need to complete. These aren't cryptic hints either, the game will literally tell you what you need to do. You find these challenges in the mission tab of your menu. Select level challenges here and from there you can select an individual challenge and level you want to unlock. Remember to leave a like if you liked the video and subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next one. If you want you can also watch a previous video by clicking on the screen. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!